Hey, I'm Josh from Vacuums RS Sewing 2. We're going to replace a belt on this commercial vacuum. Uh, this is a very popular type of vacuum cleaner. Uh, it's made under the brand Sanitaire, Bissell Commercial. Uh, Perfect actually makes some of these. Some old Oric commercials actually look like this too. You'll recognize it once we flip it over. They use these round uh, rubber belts. The, the belt is actually circular around. Uh, and boy, they burn through belts like crazy. So it's important if you know, if you own one of these vacuums, that you know how to do a belt on it. So the easiest way to change the belt, if you have a bench at waist height, you can put the machine up there facing up. Typically you've got two clips on either side here that you can unhook and then your base plate here will come off exposing the belt. So part of the reason these machines go through belts as quickly as they do is because the air chamber, the dirt chamber, runs directly over the belt. So essentially, you constantly have this high velocity air that's going over your belt, helping to dry it out. Um, the belt is also susceptible to nicks and cuts from debris that's coming through it. So this belt on this machine is currently not broken, but we still need to replace it, and I'll show you why. I'm gonna go ahead and pop it off and pull that belt, that brush out. <clears throat> you see it's significantly uh, significantly stretched, which will impede uh, performance. Now, honestly, typically in a commercial environment, they probably would leave this belt on until it breaks. This is for home use though, and this customer has noticed that it's not performing as well anymore. And this is, this is really what's causing it, is their belt is just stretched out. So most of these machines will have a groove right here, which is super helpful. Sometimes this groove gets worn off, but you'll also notice there's a little groove right there, a belt groove, right? These are super tight, so they can be tough to get on. You're gonna to wanna to put the belt on the brush first, and then you're gonna twist it and put it on the motor like that. Now, you know you've got it on right if your belt lines up with that little groove right there, right? So this is where it becomes super important to have the machine like this. If you have it at waist height like this, you can push your body up against the machine. And with the belt hooked on the motor like this, you can simply push up against the brush to stretch that belt in and it will pop, you can kind of guide it right in and it will pop right back in just like that. That's the easiest way to get them on. And you know you've got it on right because you've got it going over that groove right there. I'm gonna put it on wrong real quick. I'll flip it. And so here I've got it on wrong. You can see that I'm not lining up with that. And in fact, my belt is actually pushing up against this. If I turn the machine on like this, it's probably gonna break the belt because it's gonna push against that. So just watch out for <clears throat> making sure that you get your belt lined up with that groove. I suggest after you get it on, set it in there, I always roll the, roll the brush roller towards the back of the machine by hand. <laughs> Make sure that the belt is well set. It's not like off to the side. It'll kind of roll itself in there. I always do that anytime I'm replacing the belt before I turn the machine on, make sure everything's set. I'll snap this back on again. Test it real quick. Rocking and rolling. <laughs>